Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is nice to have you here with us. We welcome those that are watching online and listening to us on the radio as well. It's good to have you join us. I want to give thanks to Dean Gilton for joining us this morning on the piano. Pastor Dean Johnson will be preaching, and I am Pastor Naomi Mahler. Um, it's good to see you this morning. So let us stand, and we will begin with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We'll sing our gathering song, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Naomi. For the children's sermon this morning, I want us as adults and children of all ages to think about our legacy, estate planning, and what we do with the things that we have. I have in my hand probably the only thing my, five, my brother of five years older gave to me in my life. Yes, this John Deere tractor is 70 years old. Come on, children. Come on up here. Sure. I forgot to invite the children up. Yes. Have a seat. Very good. This tractor I have is 70 years old. It's a play John Deere tractor that my brother had. He got it for a present, and I always wanted to have a play tractor like this, and he would never give it to me. He wouldn't even let me play with it. You know how brothers are and sisters, they have their toys. But a few years later, he finally said, here, take this tractor, I don't want it. Yes, Butch Hogg, it's a John Deere, I know. It sits at home in my desk. So what are you going to do with your things? What are we going to do with our things, our resources? Everything from the toys we have? Are you going to give your toys to another boy or girl? Or are you just going to put them in a box? Are you going to take them to Goodwill, to new to you? Or are you going to bring them to the landfill? Or are you going to give them to somebody that has a need? All of us need to think about the things that God has given to us at any age and what are we going to do with them. Now, this is not a seminar this morning as the sermon talks about estate planning, and we will talk about that in the sermon, but it is some thoughts about the things we have, but more importantly, the plan that God has for us. And indeed, he does have it a plan for us as indicated in the scripture readings over and over again. As children of God of all ages, I invite us to think about the things we have, what we're going to do with them, what legacy we're going to leave to family, friends, institutions, churches, boys and girls that may have a need I am sure that you have some toys at home that you never play with, and there are children who have no toys. And if you ask your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa, you know, maybe we could give some of these away to somebody who has no toys. That would be a very, very good thing. Because most of the children I know have more than enough toys. So I want you to think about giving some toys away that you no longer play with or need. And for we adults, it is good at any age to think about the things we have, the things that God has blessed us with, and when we leave this earth physically, what is going to happen to those things and resources? Estate planning at any age. It's a good thing to think about, and in the process to simply thank God for all the blessings, whatever our age, what he has given to us. I talk to my brother quite often. He lives in Rushford, Minnesota. 
Debbie and I saw him last weekend, and he has a number of toys, if you will, of all sizes, and he has a lot of these kind of tractors. But I have to tell you, none of them are this color. <laughs> Sorry, Butch. <laughs> what are we going to do with our toys? What are we going to do with the things we have? It never hurts to think about it, to pray about it, because one day, whatever age, we will physically leave this earth. What is our legacy? What is our estate planning? With that, we will pray. Lord, we thank you for the gifts you have given to us, the toys as children, the cars and the tractors, the land and the businesses, the furniture and our homes. Lord, help us to understand that we are stewards of all of these things, and one day we'll no longer need them and so we pass them on to someone else. Lord, we thank you for their children, their parents and grandchildren, for their parents this day. We pray for those who struggle. We pray for those that have little resource or nothing at all. Help us to be sensitive to them, Lord, and be charitable to others in need. Amen. Thank you, boys. And for coming up this morning, girls. The two scripture passages for this morning come first from Galatians chapter 4. It's Paul's writings to the new congregation, to the new Christians. And there's very, very important themes and words in this passage, talking about adoption and talking about heirs. We are heirs of God's kingdom. And then the Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 1. As I read it, you're probably saying, this is rather a strange gospel for the third Sunday in August. It's almost like a reading for Christmas. And yes, it is. It's the words of Mary as she reflects upon what God has asked her to do. From Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, you are no longer a slave but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Would you please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 1. These are the words of Mary. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in his thoughts of their hearts. And he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. And you may be seated. Grace and hope and promise to each of you, the hearers of the Holy Scriptures this day. Amen. So as I said to the children, the children's sermon, I ask us again the question, so what will happen to all the things whatever their value, 
upon the day of our death. Estate planning is a very difficult thing because an estate planning with a lawyer or with an accountant or other advisors causes us to think ahead to a time when we not, may not feel so comfortable, and that is about our own demise, our own death. But experience has taught me that those who think about it as family, as husbands and wives and grandparents, that estate planning is a good thing. It is a good thing to decide while one is living and one is coherent to put things in writing as to what might happen with one's resources. Understand that not everyone has the same kind of resources. Some folks have nothing. Others have millions and many in between. When we look at the economics and statistics of our country, it's quite astounding as to the amount of wealth in our country today in certain sectors. Statistically, people who are born between 1955, that are 55 and 75 years of age, stand to gain over $30 trillion. That's not billion or million, $30 trillion of assets and resources from the previous generation. Do you know how much a trillion is? It's a million million. It's a whole bunch of money. And folks who are living and know they have to have a succession plan and what to do with their money, it's good to have it written down. It's good to have a plan. And I will tell you again from experiences that resources... Estate planning, wills, cause a great deal of friction in families. We see it when we plan for memorial services. We see it when we plan for funerals. We see it at wedding times. There are families that are torn apart over resources. Just this past week, a friend of mine whose brother died from COVID this winter, the funeral was held a few weeks ago. He talked to me and he said, you know, not all my family was present. I said, why is that? He said, because we don't get along because of money. And I could tell in his voice his sadness. Yes, there are challenges, there are problems, and the practicality is for all of us to think in writing what we want to have happen to our resources. Now, the New Testament reading I read from Galatians chapter 4, Paul talks about God's plan, God's estate planning for us, he just didn't create us and say, have a nice life. God had a plan from the very beginning in the creation, in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, and even now. God has a plan for us, a spiritual plan, the plan of salvation. And as I read from Luke chapter 1, the words of Mary, in the fullness of time, in the right time, God saw fit that Jesus was to be born. It's the Christmas story in August. And this person was to come and grant salvation to those, his children, his people. The idea of adoption is quite interesting. In our time and place, adoption is very, very much used. Looking up the matters of adoption, there are 41,000 adopted children in Minnesota at the present time, and there's many more waiting because the adoption procedure takes a long time, as much as six to eight months or maybe even longer. And some of you may be adopted or have adopted children or adopted grandchildren. You know the process. But once adopted, you are molded, you are melded into that family. You are treated like a biological child. 
From time to time, I visit with cho- parents who have adopted children. Yes, there are challenges, no doubt about it. But they love these children. They accept these children. They're part of the family. And as Paul says, we are adopted into God's family. We are adopted children. We didn't bring our credentials. We didn't bring our resume. We are God's creation through our parents, and we are adopted into his family. We belong to God. And Paul says, because we are adopted, the spirit of the Father has been placed within us. Think about that. We belong to God. The spirit of God has been placed within us. I know what you're thinking. If that is true, why do people and countries and civilizations act the way they do? Why do we have the wars in Afghanistan? They're God's people. Why do we have the wars in Iran and Croatia? They're God's people. Why did we have the civil war? They're God's people. Why do we have gangs? They're God's people. The simple but complicated answer is this. Yes, they're God's people, but there's an inner battle going on with God's people between good and evil, God and the devil. There is that. That's what life is about. But the Spirit of God is present in people, and yes, there are many barnacles and calluses that have come and have put people on the wrong path. But they're still God's children adopted into his family. And yes, God will prevail. Good will prevail in the very end. And we are part of that adoption. We belong to God. And then Paul goes on to say, because we're adopted, because the Spirit of God has been placed within us, yes, we are heirs. H-E-I-R-S, we're heirs in the kingdom of God. God has made a plan. He has done estate spiritual planning for us. We belong to God. We're adopted into his family. The spirit of truth has been given to us. And we are his heirs. Think about that. We're not outcasts. We're redeemed sinners. We belong to God. And his intention is that we be saved, spiritually saved. That is God's plan. And so today as we leave this place of worship, as a practical matter, we say to ourselves and to our spouses and our families, Have we done appropriate planning for our estate and when the day we will die? And in doing so, remember what God has planned for you and planned for me. He's adopted us into his family. He's given us the spirit of truth somewhere within each of us The Spirit of God resides, and sometimes it gets blemished, sometimes it gets callous, sometimes it gets hardened. I think back to my days, officer, advanced training, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. My roommate was Bob Brown, a Baptist pastor, chaplain from South Carolina. His civilian job, he worked on death row in South Carolina. And the stories he told me about the men who had committed heinous crimes, mostly murder. And Sunday morning as he had chapel on death row, and as he listened to these men, there were moments he said he knew that the power and influence of God, despite what they had done, 
The power of forgiveness, the power of good, finally overcame the power of evil and what they had done. Never sell short the power of God in your life, in mine, and in the world. For God saw in the fulfillness of time that he sent his Son, his Son to teach, his Son to suffer, his Son to die, his Son to live, and his Son to have a plan for us. We're part of God's family. In all the struggles and challenges of this life, we belong to God. Why? Because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. And thus we are heirs. We have and we will inherit eternal life. We need not die to inherit eternal life. And eternal life begins the day we're born, the day we're baptized. We belong to God. And so we think about our adoption, our inheritance, and know this. May the peace of Christ, now that we know again that God has a plan for us, the plan of adoption, the plan of inheritance, for we are his heirs. Now go in peace. Amen. So I leave this morning, I'm going to Svea Lutheran Church as part of our arrangement with them that one of our pastors will provide services each Sunday. So Pastor Naomi will conduct the communion service as well as the prayers. May you have a good week. I invite you to stand and let us together with the whole Christian church confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all of God's creation according to their needs. Gracious Lord, we magnify you and we rejoice in you because you have looked upon us with favor. We give you thanks that we are yours, that we belong to you, and that we will always be your children. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for this world, Lord, and we give thanks for your promises to feed the hungry, to lift up those who are downtrodden. We give you thanks for your care of all of us. We pray for peace throughout the world and that your justice would reign. We pray for the country of Haiti in the aftermath of an earthquake. And we pray for the country of Afghanistan we pray for peace and healing. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for your creation, and we pray for rain. Be with the farmers, Lord, and all the places where there is drought. We pray for those who are suffering from forest fires and other kinds of natural disasters. Help us to remember to take care of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. We remember all who are struggling and we give thanks for your promises of healing. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction, for those who are uh, struggling with issues of mental health and physical illness. We uh, pray for those who are grieving and sad today, and we ask for your comfort. We remember especially those who are hospitalized, and we pray for Donna Haynes and Don Thompson, and we also pray for Amanda Herman, and we remember the Ulrich family in their grief. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all the blessings of life, for the love of family, for the care and of friendship, and for all good things. And we give you thanks for 60 years of marriage for Carol and Book, Butch Haug. Lord, in your mercy. We put all these things, those that are said, and the, those things unspoken in our hearts. We lift them up to you, trusting in your love and your mercy. We put all of these things into your hand. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. You may be seated as we receive our offering.
the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the rim of cup of the blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. And so we come to the table and we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet, for all is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated and come forward at the direction of the ushers. If you so desire, we have grape juice and gluten-free options available for you. Sweet. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite those who are giving home communion to come forward um, and to the communion rail. Thank you all for your part in this ministry. This is another way that we extend our ministry outside the walls of this place. We are not contained here. And so, again, those of you that are watching online and listening on the radio, we are grateful that our reach can extend um, to those who are homebound or not able to be physically present with us. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may return to your seats. And we pray again. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a few uh, quick announcements here uh, before we leave. Uh, you're all invited for coffee back in the friendship room today. Um, hope that you will stay and join us. And next week for coffee, we will have something special. We're going to have mini donuts out in the parking lot starting at 8 o'clock before church. So you can come early and get coffee and donuts and then go again. I mean, you can go twice, before and after. Sounds good to me. Um, but we're excited to have that. That's going to be a fun little thing. We thank Carol Berry, a member of our congregation, for helping to provide that. Um, and then today, also this afternoon, we, have a gather we will have a gathering of Calvary friends at Games Lake Park up in New London, the county park. And it's uh, open to anyone that wants to come spend some time at the beach starting at 3 o'clock. We'll have some hot dogs and chips and invite you to bring a dish to share if you'd like to be a part of that and be out um, at the beach. It's for uh, all ages of Calvary friends, um, but es especially those young ones that enjoy swimming, um, whether that's young at heart or whatever, but you are welcome for that. Uh, as I mentioned in the prayers, we want to recognize Butch and Carol Haug for 60 years of marriage today. Butch and Carol, you want to stand up or wave your hands? And... That is a great uh, milestone to share, and as we're always... Uh, happy to hear of those milestones. If, you want, if that is happening in your life, please let us know. We announce these things as we know them, so we are grateful to share in that. And then uh, finally, Pastor Dean wanted you all to know that the bell is scheduled to tentatively anyway return and be reinstalled on Tuesday the 24th uh, in the morning. So if you want to come look at it being put back, um, we're looking forward to that, and again, thank you to all of you who have helped contribute to the fund uh, for that restoration, and if, if you are still able to contribute and have not yet, um, we invite your gifts for that, so thank you very much. Um, here it's the middle of summer, and how much do we have going on still? That's just great, and I'm just glad to see all of you here. Um, and so now I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is, O oh, Sing to the Lord.
got a new song, I'll sing to the Lord. I'll sing of a new song, I'll sing to the Lord. I'll sing a new song, I'll sing to our God. I'll sing to our God. For God is the Lord, and God has done wonders. Our God is the Lord, and God has done wonders. For God is the Lord, and God has done wonders. Oh, sing to the Lord, oh, sing to the Lord. So dance for God, and blow all the trumpets of death. You are the body of Christ.